So you hold it with your two hands, okay, like that. Yeah. Hold it tight because it's quite a strong fish, okay? So if you hold it tight, yeah. and if, if the fish wants to reel, if the fish wants to run, right? Keep yeah. keep that, keep see the bend in that rod, keep it bent like that, that's it. If he wants to run, you let him run, and then if you want to reel him in, you can reel him in, okay? Yes, well done. Well done. What is up guys, welcome back to another day out on the water. Right then, let's talk methods. So we are at the beginning of May right now. It's gonna be a very, very hot day today. I've checked the weather forecast as well and we do not have a lot of wind today. So flat, calm, bright sun, probably the worst conditions you could have for fly fishing. But that's a good thing. We like it to be hard. It means we have to work it out. So because it's the beginning of May and because now the buzzer hatches should be in full swing at every fishery we go to, I'm gonna set up with two rods. I've had a quick walk around the lake and what I can see is it's a relatively shallow lake in most places. There's a lot of weed and there isn't much wind. So that means that there isn't a lot of chop on the water and you can see straight through. There are quite high weed beds all around the lake. So I'm not gonna have a lot of room to work with in terms of depth. So rod number one, I'm gonna go for a six weight with a single dry fly. That dry fly probably gonna be a strip quill cull. We'll start small, go for a 16. If we think we can get away with bigger, we'll switch. And if a strip quill cull doesn't work, I'll probably then switch to a yellow owl. That's rod number one. And on that rod, in terms of the setup itself, it's a Vision Stiller Maniac six weight with a new Haley floater and then a tapered leader from Airflow of nine foot. And then on the business end, I've got about five pound of Rio Fluoroflex. On the second rod, I'm gonna switch to two buzzers. I'm gonna fish them on a five weight uh, Streamflex FX2. And I'm just gonna work my way around the lake quickly, try and find a pod of feeding or moving fish that I can see feeding on the top. And that's where we'll end up. So. Here we go, hot day, let's see how it goes. Right, it would be better if I had the six or the seven weight here. I'm chucking it into the wind, which is not great on a five weight, but we will work with what we've got. I think these fish will come up to a dry. They're cruising a few inches under the surface. Not very deep at all. So keeping the buzzers high enough requires us to switch to the washing line. So for now, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna switch to a dry. And we'll see how that goes now. There you go. There you go. Didn't take us long once we had the dry zone. So as soon as it landed there, I just gave it one long pull and a little bit of movement was just enough for that fish. Couldn't say no to that CDC. Bites quite well, mind. Considering its size. We won't keep the fish out of the water and we'll let him go back in. Okay, so the first fish is in, that's a good start. So I basically did about 10 minutes on the buzzers quickly, worked out very, very quickly that I've got a weed bed in front of me, which comes up really shallow. And what that basically means is I'm not be able to fish those flies effectively, the buzzers. So there were a couple of fish rising at the top. So I thought, right, okay, straight on with the cull, let's see what happens. And within a few casts, we've got a fish straight away. And a lovely looking fish it was. 
So the plan now, I'm going to stick here for another half hour probably. The lake's pretty quiet today, so there's plenty of uh, space around the lake for everybody. Um, but I'm going to target some of these fish that are rising behind us. So, let's get back out there. Okay, I'm not sure whether the camera can pick that up. But dead in front of me, about five foot off of this island, there's a small pod of fish with the occasional fish rising. So, these fish in front of us, they're only, there's only one or two sporadically feeding. So, I could go for the dry, but I will hedge my bets and say that if I can chuck these spiders through them, it'll spark one of those fish's interest and they might, in a competitive way, chase after the fly. So, we don't know, but we'll see. I'm just gonna degrease the leader again. The ideal situation is I want that first cast to land perfectly, look perfectly, because it's a small fishery. These fish will spook very, very quickly. So I only may get one or two casts at them at this point before they move on to a different part of the lake or just switch off completely, you know? Let's see what happens. I'll just move there now. Right, ready? Here we go, there we go. First cast luck. On the spider. So, I'll just prove the point there now. I could have gone for a dry, but because there were a few of them there, and not all of them are rising, chucking a small couple of spiders in there proved to work. Now I am fishing very light, we're only fishing five pound and we're on a five weight rod. So we'll just play with these fish very gently. Not a big fish at all, smaller than what we've caught so far. But it's not about size today, it's about tackling what are difficult conditions and making them work in your favour. There you go, lovely. Lovely markings on him there. And because of the time of year, we won't take him out of the water. I'll just release him straight away. Okay, so let's have a quick summary of what's happening at the moment. Spiders. Spiders are very good at this time of year in a fishery like this. So they won't work at every fishery you go to, but what we've got is a shallow lake where the fish are sitting high and there's an abundance of food. We started with buzzers and they didn't work at all, didn't get a take. And that's largely because I think that the buzzers were sinking below the fish and to keep them up in the fish, I had to move them. That counteracts the whole principle of buzzers. You want to keep them as static as possible. And I think that was where that failed. So what I did was I switched over to the spiders and fishing three spiders on a light tip bit on a very light rod and just mixing up the retrieve, but predominantly trying to keep those flies as high in the water as possible. And it's by far been the most successful method so far today. So what does the rod and the kit look like? So I've got my river rod, which is a Gray's FX2 Streamflex Mark II. Um, I've got a Ferio, no, a Barrio, sorry, a Barrio floating fly line. And then I've got probably about 18 foot of five pound Rio Fluoroflex. And then on the end, I've got basically three different spiders. So we've got a brown spider, a natural looking spider, and a black spider. Now the whole point of fishing like this is to fish very, very light. If you were to fish this on seven pound, I don't think you'd catch anything. You really need to scale it down as light as you can physically manage. And that's why this isn't being fished on a six or a seven weight, it's being fished on a five weight. So that's the method. Let's jump straight back in to see if we can get some more fish. Okay then, so we've had a few fish now at this point, which is great, fantastic, enjoyable. Now it's time to do something slightly different for 10 minutes. There are carp in this lake and the fishery manager has said that we can fish for them 
um, on the ticket that we bought. So just for a bit of fun, I've seen a few carp swimming right around me here now. If we get one, fantastic. After that, we'll go straight back to the trout. So let's see what happens. Go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. Yep, there you go. Oh, there you go. I watched him take it there now. There we go. He got ourselves a carp. So the young lad over there, we haven't caught a fish yet. So what we'll do is we'll give the rod to the, to the young lad now. Coming around with his father. You want to come and hold the rod? <laughs> so you hold it with your two hands, okay, like that? Yeah. Hold it tight because it's quite a strong fish, okay? So if you hold it tight, and if, if the fish wants to reel, if the fish wants to run, right? Keep, yeah. keep that, keep, see the bend in that rod? Keep it bent like that, that's it. If he wants to run, you let him run, and then if you want to reel him in, you can reel him in, okay? On the end is a carp. Is it? Yeah, have you ever caught a carp before? Uh, yeah. Yeah? Oh, there we are. Not on the fly rod, though. Not on the fly rod, oh, there we go. Something different for you? <laughs> is he ready to come in? Mm. Do you think? Yeah, he's off. Oh, there he goes. Oh, oh. That's it, I'm gonna try walking back to Dad and I'll train that to you if he's ready. I've never caught a carp on a fly rod, Nerves. So no. I've got one on me now. <laughs> yes, well done. Well done. It's a lovely fish as well. Look at that fish. Well done. That's, that's gotta be at least at least five or six, I think. What do you think? Yeah? Moving, well done. Well <laughs> done. Thanks for that, that was uh, kind of you. No, that's no problem at all. Made his day. And there we go. There's Mervyn's lovely carp. And we're we'll getting straight back. Off he goes. And there you go. That is what fishing is all about. If you can help a child enjoy that thrill, like we all have at some point in our lives in this sport, that is what we all strive to achieve. <laughs>